A further two men have been charged with terrorist murder in connection with the deadly Brussels attacks. They're suspected of links with the rental of a property thought to have been used as a safe house ahead of last month's bombings in which 32 people were killed. Prosecutors have identified them only as Smail F., born in 1984, and Ibrahim F., born in 1988. Four other suspects were picked up on Friday, including Mohamed Abrini, who investigators say has confessed to leaving a bomb at Brussels airport. Police raided the suspected safe house in the Brussels district of Etebek on Saturday. Turkey's president has filed a formal complaint against a German comedian in a case which could test the limits of free speech. Erdogan has called for the prosecution of Jan Böhmermann for performing a satirical poem on the German TV channel ZDF, the content of which implies the president engages in sexual relations with animals, among other However, the case has divided opinion, with media analysts arguing it should be considered satire. Chancellor Merkel risks upsetting her vote. Relations. Fighting has continued in Syria on the eve of the first parliamentary elections in four years. This footage purports to show government airstrikes hitting rebel-held areas in Homs province. Activists say barrel bombs were used in Talbise. Two people were reported to have been killed and many injured. The self-proclaimed Islamic State... The region in the last fortnight marks the most serious challenge to a truce brokered by the U.S. and Russia. U.N. envoy Staffan de Mistura visiting Damascus has been told by the Syrian government that Turkey and Saudi Arabia have been ordering insurgents to stage attacks aimed at foiling planned Geneva talks. Wednesday's planned elections have been criticized as a sham by the international community and the opposition. Come and take power. All candidates in the election are said to be pro-government and the votes being held only in state-held areas, not in those controlled by rebels or ISIL. But the head of the election committee says people displaced from some of the worst war-torn areas, such as Aleppo and Deir al-Zur, will be able to vote in polling centres set up elsewhere in the country. Video from the UN's World Food Programme shows relief supplies being dropped on Deir al-Zur, the first such aid for over two years to reach the city which is besieged by ISIL. A Turkish soldier has been killed and dozens injured in a car bomb in Diyarbakir province in the southeast of the country. 39 soldiers and eight civilians were hurt in the explosion in the town of Hani. The military said a vehicle filled with explosives rammed into a police station. The southeast has been rocked by violence since a ceasefire between the Turkish government and the outlawed Kurdish militant group, the PKK, collapsed last year. Residential areas in Jizra and other towns have been destroyed in anti-terror operations carried out by Turkish forces. This girl's 13-year-old brother was killed in Diyarbakir. Her mother says, I asked her, why are you crying? She said, Mum, I miss my brother so much, I want him to come back. I said, your brother can't come, he's in paradise. I said, I also miss him. The boy, Chihat, was unable to escape the district before the military offensive. His parents, who said he wanted to go to law school, heard about their son's death on television. Because of the curfew, they've not been able to collect his body. As the summer season approaches, Greece is stepping up efforts to evacuate migrants from its biggest port of Piraeus, the main gateway to the Aegean holiday islands. Buses have been laid on to take those sleeping rough to organized reception centers. Some are making the move, many others prefer to stay put, afraid of a holding center resembling a jail. Tens of thousands of migrants are stranded in Greece amid border closures in the Balkans. Given this, an EU deal to deport illegal migrants to Turkey and warmer weather, a surge in migration through Italy is now expected. Hence Austria's preliminary construction work in the Alpine Brenner Pass.
tears intensifying. Greece accused Macedonian police of using excessive force against migrants trying to break through. The Macedonians have hit back, saying it's down to Greece to ensure law and order is respected in the Edomeni migrant camp. The Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi has begun a two-day trip to Iran, the highest-ranking European. in January. Italy used to be Iran's main economic and commercial partner. Annual trade between the two countries peaked at around 7 billion euros, but a decade of nuclear-related sanctions saw the figure plummet. Iran joined the global trading system again in January following the deal to lift sanctions in exchange for limiting its nuclear ambitions. Now it's seeking European help to upgrade its infrastructure and invest in manufacturing. Terms have been agreed with Italy for deals in oil, transport and shipping. A Brazilian congressional committee has decided that there are grounds to impeach and battle President Dilma Rousseff. Amid chaotic scenes, the 65-member committee voted by 38 to 27 to move the process forward to a crucial vote this weekend in the full lower house of Congress. Rousseff is facing accusations that she manipulated government accounts to hide a growing deficit to boost her re-election prospects in 2014. The battle over her impeachment has polarised the nation. Her predecessor, facing his own graft investigation, the former Brazilian president Lula da Silva, led a big support rally in Rio de Janeiro. He said, I never imagined that at 70 years of age I would see people orchestrating a coup to remove a president democratically elected by popular vote. Rousseff has denied any wrongdoing and is rallying the rank and file of her Workers' Party. But caught in a political storm fueled by Brazil's worst recession in decades and biggest ever corruption scandal, Rousseff has lost key coalition allies in Congress. And it hasn't helped the Vice President Michel Temer released an audio tape by mistake that showed him preparing to take over should she be forced out, with him calling for a government of national unity.